Have you ever observed the elegance with which a river flows, winding its way around obstacles, never rushing, yet always reaching its destination? Have you watched a tree grow, stretching towards the sky, never straining but always expanding? There's a rhythm, a natural pulse to life, a kind of harmonious dance that doesn't rely on force or strain, yet achieves the seemingly impossible. What if I told you that the same principle could be applied to your own life? What if the very act of not trying could get you closer to your goals than years of hard grind and force? Welcome to a journey into the profound philosophy of the East, where the idea of non-action, or Wu Wei, reigns supreme. It's a concept that has shaped the lives of countless individuals, guiding them towards a life of harmony, peace, and yes, achievement. But it defies a lot of what we've been conditioned to believe. In today's relentless, hustle-driven world, the very thought of achieving something without aggressive action sounds, at best, like a romantic dream, and at worst, sheer laziness. But Wu Wei is neither. It's the intricate art of knowing when to act and when to remain still. Now this term might be new to many of you. Originating from Taoist philosophy, this ancient Chinese term literally translates to non-action or non-doing. But much like many age-old philosophical concepts, the meaning goes far deeper than its literal translation. It's not about sitting idly by while life happens around you. Instead, it's about aligning one's actions so perfectly with the natural flow of circumstances that everything seems to fall into place effortlessly. Imagine for a moment a martial artist, poised, balanced, waiting. When the opponent strikes, the artist doesn't exert unnecessary force. Instead, they channel the momentum, use the energy given to them and move in harmony with the situation. That, in essence, is Wu Wei. It's the ability to recognize when to exert effort and when to let things unfold, trusting that the universe or the Tao is always in a natural state of balance. And here lies the paradox. In a world that champions the idea of more effort equals more results, the Taoist principle of Wu Wei suggests the opposite. Sometimes, it's in the space of non-action, in the pause, the breath, the waiting, that true power is realized. It's a counterintuitive thought, isn't it? That by trying less, we might achieve more. By letting go of our need to control every outcome, we might find that outcomes align more harmoniously with our desires. Consider for a moment the last time you tried to force a result. Maybe you were trying to convince someone of your viewpoint, or perhaps you were pushing hard for a work project to come to fruition in a specific way. How did that feel? Tense, exhausting, frustrating. Now recall a time where you set an intention, did your part, and then let things unfold. The difference in these two approaches is not just in the outcomes, but in the journey itself. It's worth noting that this isn't about advocating passivity. Quite the opposite. Wu Wei is deeply active. It requires acute awareness, keen observation, and a deep connection with one's environment and self. The key difference is where the action comes from, a place of force or a place of alignment. In this exploration we're about to embark on, I invite you to open your mind and heart to the wisdom of the East, to the lessons of the rivers, the trees, and the ancient sages who understood something profound about the universe. That in the art of not trying, we might just discover the secret to achieving everything we've ever wanted, and to do so with grace, ease, and joy. To truly grasp the depth of Wu Wei, we must first journey back in time, traversing the landscapes of ancient China, where atop misty mountains and within serene temples, the seeds of Taoism were sown. The concept of Wu Wei is not just a passing thought or a modern trend, it's a profound wisdom deeply embedded in the halls of Eastern philosophy. Taoism, or Taoism as it's sometimes referred to, is an ancient philosophical and spiritual tradition that has shaped Chinese culture for over two millennia. At its heart lies the Tao or Tao, often translated as the Way. 
However, much like Wu Wei, Tao is a term so vast and profound that it's somewhat elusive to direct translation. The Tao is described as the ultimate, the source, the underlying nature of all existence. It's both the beginning and the end, the path and the traveler, and it is in this cosmic dance of the Tao that the principle of Wu Wei finds its rhythm. The most revered text in Taoism, the Tao Te Ching, penned by the mysterious figure Lao Tzu, offers pearls of wisdom about this principle. Here's a taste from chapter 37 of the Tao Te Ching. The Tao never does anything, yet through it all things are done. If powerful men and women could remain centered in the Tao, all things would be in harmony. The paradoxical essence of this concept is palpable in these lines. The Tao, in its non-action, gives rise to all action. It's not the clanging, noisy efforts, but the silent, profound stillness that brings forth the universe's dance. When we align with the Tao, when we flow in harmony with the natural order, we can achieve more than when we swim against the current. But Taoism isn't the only Eastern philosophy that reveres the principles akin to Wu Wei. Journeying eastward from China, we touch the shores of Japan, where Zen Buddhism flourished. Zen, with its emphasis on meditation, mindfulness and presence, echoes the sentiments of Wu Wei in its teachings. While Zen doesn't directly speak of non-action, it profoundly emphasizes the state of being over doing. Consider the Zen practice of Shikantaza, or just sitting. It's a form of meditation where one isn't trying to do anything, think anything or achieve anything. Instead, it's about simply being, observing and existing. It's a radical act of pure presence, where the meditator is not seeking enlightenment, but is instead just being in the moment. This just being, while seemingly passive, is an intense form of active engagement with the present. Much like Wu Wei, it's about alignment, harmony, and merging with the flow. Moreover, while Zen and Taoism might be the most prominent, many other Eastern traditions echo similar sentiments. The ancient Indian philosophy of Nishkama Karma from the Bhagavad Gita, for instance, speaks of action without attachment to results, a theme closely resonant with Wu Wei's principles. It's fascinating to observe that despite the geographical, linguistic and cultural divides, there seems to be a universal thread weaving through these philosophies. They all point towards a profound truth. Sometimes it's not our forceful interventions, but our gentle surrender our alignment with a greater cosmic dance that brings about the most profound outcomes. Whether it's the silent Tao guiding all existence, the Zen master just sitting in profound presence, or the Gita's call to act without attachment, the message is clear. There is an art, a subtle beauty in not trying, in just being, and in flowing with the currents of life. As we delve deeper into the philosophical waters of the East, the term Wu Wei rises as a lighthouse, guiding us towards understanding a distinctive approach to life. It's a phrase that intrigues, conjuring images of stillness, perhaps even of monks atop secluded mountains. But what does it truly signify? Let's commence with the linguistics. Wu Wei is a Chinese term where Wu translates to not or without, and Wei means doing or action. Together they frame the idea of non-action or non-doing. But herein lies a quandary. A superficial interpretation might suggest inertia, stagnation or passive idleness. However, that would be a grievous misinterpretation of a profound philosophy that has been a guiding light for sages, rulers and thinkers for centuries. This principle is akin to the elegance of a dancer lost in the performance, so engrossed in the moment that every move feels not like a calculated step but a natural extension of their being. It's the painter whose brush flows freely across the canvas, not directed by the conscious mind but guided by a spontaneous spirit. This idea is not about the absence of action but the purity of action. It's an act free from friction, free from the rigid structures of overthinking, planning, or forcing. 
To elucidate further, consider the flow of water. It doesn't strain, doesn't push, yet it's unceasing in its movement, carving valleys and shaping mountains over time. Water doesn't try, in the way we often understand the term, it simply follows its intrinsic nature, moves in alignment with the environment. This is the essence of Wu Wei, acting in accordance with one's nature and the nature of the universe, without unnecessary force. A frequent misconception surrounding Wu Wei is equating it with laziness or a lack of ambition. This couldn't be further from the truth. Embracing this concept doesn't mean abandoning aspirations or responsibilities. Instead, it signifies a reframing of how we approach them. For instance, a martial artist practicing Wu Wei is not passive. When confronted, they don't use brute strength to overpower an opponent. Instead, they employ a deep understanding of energy, momentum, and leverage to redirect forces using minimal energy for maximum impact. It's an aligned action, strategic and efficient, rather than a brute force approach. A modern analogy could be drawn from the world of aeronautics. Consider the principle of aerodynamic efficiency in aircraft design. Engineers don't merely add more power to make planes fly faster or higher. They craft the design to minimize air resistance, allowing the plane to glide smoothly with lesser fuel consumption. This optimization, where you achieve more by using less, mirrors this profound Taoist philosophy. In life, this might translate to listening more than speaking in a heated discussion, allowing the conversation to flow to understanding rather than forcing an agenda. In business, it could mean understanding market currents and consumer behavior and positioning one's strategy in alignment rather than pushing against prevailing trends. In essence, Wu Wei champions a harmonious engagement with life where action emerges from a place of deep awareness, alignment, and adaptability. It encourages us to observe, to understand the rhythm, and to act when the time is ripe. It's about sensing the ebb and flow of situations and seamlessly integrating our actions within these natural rhythms. In a world constantly urging us to act, to hustle, to push harder, the ancient wisdom of Wu Wei offers a refreshing counterintuitive perspective. It reminds us that sometimes, the greatest power lies not in how forcefully we can push, but in how harmoniously we can flow. The natural world has always been a reservoir of wisdom, offering insights into life's deeper truths. For the sages of the East, especially Lao Tzu, one element stood out as an unparalleled teacher, water. This simple, unassuming substance, covering the majority of our blue planet, becomes a potent metaphor in the hands of the Taoist philosopher, providing us with profound insights into the essence of Wu Wei. In the Tao Te Ching, he articulates the philosophy of Wu Wei using the metaphor of water in numerous passages. One of the most notable mentions is, Nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water, yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. Water's nature is not to resist, not to challenge head-on, and certainly not to rush, yet it's always persistent, always moving, always finding a way. Think of a meandering river, it doesn't take a straight path, nor does it force its way through obstacles. It carves its path patiently, molding the very landscape around it over time. Even when confronted with a rock or a mountain, water doesn't halt. It simply finds a way around, under, or over it. Such is the essence of Wu Wei acting without unnecessary force, allowing things to unfold and gracefully navigating the path of least resistance. Lao Tzu's emphasis on water illustrates a crucial aspect of resilience. In contemporary understanding, resilience might be misconstrued as toughness or rigidity. But true resilience, as symbolized by water, is in its adaptability, its flexibility. Water takes the shape of any container it's put in, yet it retains its essence. It can be soft as a morning dewdrop or powerful as a tidal wave adapting to its context without losing its core nature. Similarly, 
When we embody these principles in our lives, we develop a resilience that doesn't stem from mere stubbornness or grit, but from a deep understanding and alignment with the flow of life. When faced with adversity, rather than breaking under pressure or resisting change, we learn to adapt, evolve, and find new ways just as water would. Every obstacle, much like the boulders in a stream, offers an opportunity, a chance to recalibrate, reassess, and find a new path. The rocks don't deter the water, they merely change its course. Similarly, in life, challenges and setbacks are inevitable. This philosophy, as encapsulated by the water metaphor, encourages us not to meet these challenges with brute force or denial, but with understanding and adaptability. Imagine being faced with a professional setback. Instead of resisting it or dwelling in despair, the principle of Wu Wei would have us assess the situation, understand its dynamics, and then act in a way that aligns with the present reality, all the while maintaining our broader vision. Much like water, the journey might take unexpected turns, but the destination remains in sight. But perhaps the most striking feature of water is its unassuming power. It nourishes, sustains, carves valleys and erodes mountains. All this, not through violent bursts, but through consistent, gentle action. In many ways, water embodies the paradox of Wu Wei, soft yet powerful, gentle yet persistent, flexible yet unyielding in its essence. Lao Tzu, in drawing parallels between water and Wu Wei, compels us to reconsider our notions of strength and success. In a world that often equates power with aggression and achievement with relentless pursuit, the water metaphor offers a counter-narrative. It speaks of a strength that is not loud but profound, of achievements not born out of strife, but out of harmonious alignment. In embracing the teachings of Lao Tzu and the wisdom of Wu Wei, we are not just adopting a philosophical stance, but a way of life, one where we respect the flow, understand the power of persistence, recognize the strength in softness, and above all, trust the journey. For in the end, like water, we will find our way, shaping paths and carving destinies, one gentle ripple at a time. As we traverse the landscape of thought, from the whispering pines of ancient China to the bustling laboratories and lecture halls of 20th century psychology, there emerges a fascinating confluence. The wisdom of Wu Wei, as it meets modern psychological understanding, finds a vibrant echo in a term that's piqued the interest of thinkers, athletes, artists and professionals alike, the flow state. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, a pioneering figure in positive psychology, introduced the concept of flow to the wider world through his groundbreaking research. He describes flow as a state of complete immersion in an activity, wherein an individual is so engrossed that everything else seems to fade away. Time appears to warp, self-consciousness diminishes, and all that matters is the task at hand. In Csikszentmihalyi's own words, Flow is a state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even at great cost, for the sheer sake of doing it. At the heart of both Wu Wei and the flow state lies the concept of effortlessness, not in the sense of lack of exertion, but as a harmonious alignment that removes the sensation of strain. When one is in a flow state, there isn't a feeling of trying hard. Instead, actions and decisions arise spontaneously, guided by intuition and experience. This mirrors the teachings of Wu Wei, where actions are in alignment with the nature of the self and the universe, transcending the realm of forced effort. Present moment awareness is another common thread weaving through both philosophies. In the flow state, individuals are deeply anchored in the now, they aren't distracted by past regrets or future anxieties. Every ounce of their attention is riveted on the present task. Similarly, Wu Wei emphasizes the importance of moving with the natural rhythms of the present moment, 
unburdened by the weights of past and future. The environment and our alignment with it play a pivotal role in both concepts. In Csikszentmihalyi's flow, an individual's skills are perfectly matched with the challenge at hand. There's a harmonious balance where neither boredom, from a task being too easy, nor anxiety, from a task being too hard, can prevail. This equilibrium resonates deeply with Uwe's call for aligned action, where one acts in harmony with the external environment, neither overreaching nor underperforming. A particularly fascinating overlap is the transcendence of the self. In the throes of a flow state, the ego, with all its insecurities and self-consciousness, dissolves. One becomes the action they are performing, be it painting, running, writing, or any other activity. This dissolution of the self offers a profound sense of fulfillment and contentment. In the embrace of Wu Wei, a similar transcendence is observed. By aligning with the Tao, the way of the universe, one moves beyond the narrow confines of the self. There's a melding into a larger tapestry, a harmonious union with the world around, which brings about deep inner peace and satisfaction. In the realms of modern psychology, the flow state has been linked to heightened creativity, increased productivity, and enhanced well-being. From athletes breaking records to artists crafting masterpieces, the fingerprints of flow are evident. Csikszentmihalyi's research provides a scientific framework to what ancient Taoist sages intuited centuries ago. Both perspectives, despite the vast chasm of time and culture between them, advocate for a life of harmony, alignment, and joyful immersion. In the echoes between Wu Wei and the flow state, we witness a testament to the universality of certain truths. Whether articulated through the poetic metaphors of Lao Tzu or the empirical research of Csikszentmihalyi, the message remains consistent. True fulfillment and excellence arise not from strained effort, but from harmonious alignment with oneself the task and the world. In the vast mosaic of human civilizations, each culture has painted its unique strokes shaped by geography, history and collective aspirations. As we shift our lens westward from the tranquil banks of ancient Chinese wisdom, we encounter a markedly different ethos. Here, the drumbeat of doing reverberates with unwavering intensity. But this tireless march, while propelling societies to dizzying heights, also casts long shadows of exhaustion and ennui. Let's dive into this dynamic, understanding its origins, its implications, and its challenges. From the towering skyscrapers that scrape the heavens to the unceasing hum of metropolises that never sleep, the Western world is a testament to human ambition. Historically, this part of the world has lionized the idea of action. The American dream, for instance, encapsulates this sentiment. With hard work, determination, and a bit of luck, anyone can climb the ladder of success. It's an ethos of manifest destiny, of conquering frontiers, both external and internal. Renaissance Europe saw a burst of creativity and exploration celebrating human potential and individualism. The subsequent Industrial Revolution further entrenched the idea of ceaseless productivity, with machines and men working round the clock, transforming societies and economies. In the modern era, this celebration of action has found new avatars. The Silicon Valley startup culture, with its hustle-hard mantra, the self-help industry's emphasis on goal-setting and achievement, and even our social media landscapes that reward constant engagement all echo the same message. To be is to do. But like Icarus, soaring ever higher on waxen wings, this relentless pursuit has its perils. The consequences are manifold, affecting individuals and societies at large. Once considered a fringe phenomenon, burnout is now recognized as a legitimate syndrome by health bodies like the World Health Organization. It's characterized by emotional exhaustion, cynicism, and reduced efficacy in work. This isn't merely tiredness, it's a profound depletion of the human spirit. 
the pressure to be always on, always performing, and always reaching for the next milestone has turned stress into a ubiquitous companion for many. Chronic stress, as numerous studies suggest, has debilitating effects on physical health, mental well-being, and overall life satisfaction. Ironically, the obsession with constant action often leads to inefficiency. The myth of multitasking, the inability to disconnect, and the erosion of deep, focused work means that while we might be busier than ever, we aren't necessarily more productive. The quality of output, creativity, and innovation often suffers in the relentless churn of activity. Amidst the endless hustle, there's a creeping sense of existential void. Many begin to question the purpose of their incessant efforts. Is it merely for material accumulation, social validation, or is there a deeper meaning to life that gets obscured in the blinding dust of constant movement? The Western emphasis on doing has undoubtedly led to remarkable advancements, innovations, and improvements in living standards. But as with all things, balance is crucial. The pendulum, which has swung towards relentless action, might need some recalibration. Eastern philosophies, with their emphasis on being, on harmony, and on aligned action, like the concept of wu-wei we explored, offer a counterpoint. They invite a reconsideration of our relentless pursuit, suggesting that sometimes in letting go of forced effort, in tuning into the rhythms of nature and life, and in embracing stillness amidst the storm, we might find not just peace, but also a more profound, sustainable, and joyous productivity. As our world becomes ever more interconnected, there's an opportunity, a necessity even, to engage in a cross-cultural dialogue. To understand the strengths and limitations of different worldviews and weave together a tapestry that draws from the best of both. In this synthesis, there's hope for a future where achievement and well-being walk hand in hand, where the rivers of action and introspection merge, leading us to shores of greater understanding and fulfillment. In the luminous glow of ancient wisdom, abstract concepts often float like ethereal clouds. Their beauty and depth are undeniable, but how do we tether these lofty notions to the grounded realities of our daily lives? How can one employ the serenity and wisdom of Wu Wei amidst deadlines, digital distractions and never-ending to-do lists? Let's embark on this journey, seeking tangible strategies inspired by Wu Wei, enabling us to navigate our fast-paced world with grace and purpose. The grace of letting go. By letting it go, it all gets done. The world is won by those who let it go. But when you try and try, the world is beyond the winning. Lao Tzu. One of the most potent lessons from Wu Wei is recognizing the power of non-action, especially when action doesn't align with the natural course. In our everyday life, this can translate into understanding when to pause, step back, or even abandon a task. For example, if you're facing a creative block or are entangled in a persistent disagreement with someone, sometimes it's best to step away for a moment, take a break, and allow space for clarity to emerge. This isn't defeat or avoidance, it's strategic non-action, allowing the natural course of things to take over. In the workspace, this might mean knowing when to delegate or when to leave space for a colleague to come to a realization on their own. In personal relationships, it might be choosing not to react impulsively, allowing emotions to settle before responding. Cultivating patience. Nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. Understanding the rhythm of life, Trees don't sprout overnight, seasons transition with an innate rhythm, and the cosmos moves in its time. Wu Wei teaches us that like nature our lives too have a rhythm. Embracing patience doesn't mean being passive or lackadaisical, it means acknowledging that not everything is within our immediate control. Whether you're awaiting the germination of a seed you've planted, the fruition of a project, or the evolution of a personal relationship. Patience becomes a powerful ally. 
It provides the buffer against anxiety, the urge to interfere, or to hasten processes that naturally require time. In a practical sense, this could translate to not constantly checking for responses after sending an important email, giving space to new team members to adjust and align with company culture, or understanding that personal growth and learning have their own pace, distinct for each individual. The paradox of over-effort. Trying to control the future is like trying to take the master carpenter's place. When you handle the master carpenter's tools, chances are that you'll cut your hand. In our obsession with results, we sometimes believe that putting in more effort, working longer hours, taking on more tasks, pushing harder, will yield better outcomes. Wu Wei challenges this notion. Imagine trying to write with a pen by applying excessive pressure. Not only will the writing be messy, but you might also damage the paper or break the pen. Similarly, over-effort in our endeavors can lead to burnout, reduced efficiency, and can sometimes even sabotage the very goal we're trying to achieve. Over-preparation for an event might make you anxious and less adaptable to changes. Pushing a team relentlessly might lead to decreased morale, innovation, and productivity. In personal spheres, pressuring a relationship to progress at an unnatural pace might strain or break it. The teaching here is to find the balance between action and inaction, ensuring our efforts align with the natural progression of things. It's about trusting the process, giving our best, but also understanding that excessive force is not just unnecessary, but often detrimental. Embracing the lessons of Wu Wei in our contemporary world might seem like a challenge, but these age-old teachings aren't in opposition to action. They are a refined approach to it. It's about harmonizing with the flow of life, understanding when to act, when to wait, and when to retreat. As we integrate these lessons, we find that the wisdom of the ancients can indeed illuminate our modern paths, guiding us towards a life of balance, fulfillment, and profound understanding. Across the tapestry of human experience, countless narratives showcase the principles of Wu Wei in action, even if the protagonists of these tales might not explicitly cite this Eastern philosophy. From boardrooms to sports arenas, artists' studios to personal narratives, there's an abundance of evidence suggesting that sometimes less truly is more. Let's traverse these varied landscapes, discovering stories where effortless action made all the difference. The inception of 3M's post-it notes. One of the most iconic products to emerge from the corporate world, the post-it note was, in essence, a byproduct of an experiment gone wrong. Dr. Spencer Silver, a scientist at 3M in 1968, was attempting to develop a super strong adhesive. Instead, he accidentally created a low-tack, reusable, pressure-sensitive adhesive. For years, this mistake lay dormant, with no apparent use. It wasn't until 1974 when a colleague, Art Fry, realized its potential as a solution to his perpetually slipping bookmarks in his hymn book. By not forcing an immediate application for the failed adhesive, 3M eventually introduced a product in 1980 that would revolutionize offices worldwide, the post-it note. Had Silver been singularly focused and discarded what didn't match his initial aim, the world might never have had this indispensable tool. The Beatles Let It Be In the turbulent waters of creativity, sometimes stepping back allows the tides of inspiration to flow freely. During a period of internal disagreements and external pressures, Paul McCartney dreamt of his deceased mother who told him, let it be. This dream not only inspired the song but also represented a philosophy that McCartney and the rest of the Beatles began to embrace. Instead of forcing creativity amidst chaos, they allowed things to unfold naturally. The result? One of their most iconic songs and albums. 
It's a testament to the power of surrendering to the moment, letting go of the need to control and allowing creativity to blossom in its own time. Roger Bannister and the 4-Minute Mile Before 1954, the notion of running a mile in less than 4 minutes was considered impossible, but Roger Bannister, a medical student and runner, approached the challenge with a different philosophy. While many athletes were increasing their training regimens, Bannister decreased his. He believed in quality over quantity, ensuring that each training session was purposeful and aligned. He did not force himself into excessive routines or succumb to overtraining. With a focused and minimalist approach on May 6, 1954, Bannister did the unthinkable. He ran a mile in 3 minutes 59.4 seconds. His accomplishment was not just about physical prowess but also about understanding the rhythm of his body and knowing when to push and when to rest. The story of Julia and the unplanned journey. Julia, a marketing professional, had meticulously planned a solo trip to Italy. Every hour was accounted for, every site to be visited listed. But on her second day, she lost her itinerary to a sudden gust of wind in Venice. With no internet access and a dead phone battery, she had a choice, panic or embrace the unexpected. Choosing the latter, she allowed the city to guide her. She meandered through alleys, discovered hidden courtyards, experienced impromptu opera performances, and forged friendships with the locals. The trip became not about seeing, but about experiencing. By not trying to control every moment, Julia found herself immersed in authentic experiences that no itinerary could have offered. It was an embodiment of Wu Wei, moving effortlessly with the flow of life. These stories, spanning different domains, echo a singular truth. There exists a magic in not forcing outcomes, in understanding when to act and when to yield. They highlight the harmony that arises when humans, despite their innate desire to control and predict, align themselves with the more organic, often serendipitous flow of existence. Whether in the throes of innovation, the swirl of creativity, the adrenaline of sports or the unpredictability of personal journeys, the principles of Wu Wei shimmer through, teaching us timeless lessons about balance, patience and the unparalleled beauty of letting things be. In the dizzying whirlwind of our modern age, where the relentless drumbeat for ceaseless effort and pursuit resonates in every corner, lies a profound, almost radical, counter-narrative. The gentle whisper of Wu Wei, beckoning us towards the allure of effortlessness. It feels almost audacious, this idea of non-doing, especially when set against the backdrop of a world that equates busyness with worth and hustle with success. Yet, as we've traversed the vast landscapes of history, business, art, sports, and personal stories, a resonant theme emerges. It's the discovery that, paradoxically, it's in the spaces between our actions, in our pauses, in our yielding, that the true essence of life often reveals itself. It's in recognizing that sometimes, the most potent action is in not acting, in allowing life's river to carry us forward, rather than tirelessly swimming against the current. However, this isn't a call for passivity or an invitation to abandon our goals and aspirations. On the contrary, it's a nuanced dance between knowing when to lead and when to follow, between steering the ship and letting the winds guide us. It's about redefining our understanding of success, not as the destination arrived at through sheer force, but as the journey undertaken with grace, alignment and intuitive wisdom. Yet this discourse would be incomplete without your voice. As we conclude this exploration, we extend an invitation to each of you to share your tales of serendipity, of moments when non-doing illuminated your path, of times when letting go led you to destinations you'd never envisioned, and more so, to experiment with the principles of Wu Wei in your daily endeavors. 
For in this collective sharing and mutual experimentation, we not only enrich our individual lives, but weave together a tapestry of experiences, painting a world where effortlessness isn't a luxury, but an exquisite art form we all have the privilege to practice. In embracing Wu Wei, perhaps we'll find that the most profound truths of life aren't shouted from mountaintops, but whispered in the silent corridors of understanding, waiting for those willing to listen, to discover. Let us embark on this journey together, carving paths illuminated by the gentle glow of effortless action, and in doing so, redefine the contours of a life well lived. <laughs>